The Spirit of God, as the choir sang, blows where it will. But the promise is that the Spirit will rest on each one. Verse 4, the Spirit gives each one ability. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, and Peter says in 1 Peter 4, that the Spirit gives gifts to each person. In Acts 2, as Peter is preaching his Pentecost sermon, he bases his sermon on the text from the Old Testament prophet Joel, chapter 2. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Notice how inclusive God is. Notice who receives the gift of the Spirit. Sons and daughters speaking God's word. Young men seeing visions. Old men dreaming dreams. And in that day also slaves, both men and women. No one, no one is excluded. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And verse 21, the conclusion, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I appreciate the preparation work that Suzanne Hopkins, thank you Suzanne, does for our weekly Bible studies, for the small group studies that you may be a part of, and as PT would always say, and if you aren't in one, start one. The studies are on the website, or you can pick one up in the, the narthex at the, at the table out there. I like the quote that she includes from Audrey West, a professor of New Testament from our seminary in Chicago. She summarizes the Spirit's work in these four ways. Number one, God's Spirit is not ours to control. God's Spirit is not restricted by human will or desire. We cannot drive its wind or stop its force any more than we can control a hurricane squall. We cannot catch it, contain it, control it, or confine it. Number two, God's Spirit is active where we least expect it. On that first Pentecost, Joel's prophecy is fulfilled right before their eyes. They see and they hear God's Spirit being poured out on all sorts of people, sons and daughters, old and young, even servants. But they need Peter's help to make sense of it all. Do we notice where the Spirit is being poured out today? Could it be on the young person's we fear that we cannot reach. The older persons we fear will not try something new. The marginalized persons we too often do not even notice. If we watch and listen for the spirits moving among them, perhaps we will hear them speaking, dreaming, envisioning, being caught up in the power of the living God. Number three, God's Spirit empowers proclamation. The disciples speak in languages familiar to their hearers. In this case, immigrants from a variety of places. The disciples do not manufacture this power, but they receive it from God. The ability to speak the gospel in words that others will understand. Does that rest on a new marketing plan for potential members? It rests on the power of God and the believer's openness to be moved to proclaim what God has done through the centuries and is now doing in the lives of God's people. And finally, number four, God's Spirit is poured out for the sake of the world. Pentecost is not only a celebration of the certain promise that wherever fire burns, wherever the wind blows, wherever chaos and life intersect, the Spirit of God is there blowing where it will and driving God's people into the heart of God's mission. So what is God's mission for Ascension Lutheran Church School and Foundation? Jesus' last words to us giving us, give us our marching orders. Before he ascended into heaven, he gave us his word, the word in Acts 1.8. Let's read it together. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In other words, 
as our sermon title states, Spirit Sent to Neighbors and Nations. The mission of God gives to us, that the Spirit empowers us for, is always both local and global. It's never either or, it's, it's always both and. Both to our local neighbors across the street, and to our global neighbors, the nations near and across the oceans. If you have a newsletter yet this morning, I invite you to pull out the green sheet here as we look at both sides of this paper. We start by looking at Essential Lutheran Church Community Concerns Committee. This is the side where ministry options are for local outreach to our neighbors and in our community and nearby. And be working with this Community Concerns Committee to lead some of the ministries if you're interested in learning more about them, any of them, or working on them, visit with your pastors this summer about it. Um, Pastor, as Pastor Tim and I talked about this page this week, we were um, PT actually brought up the, the bottom paragraph there that as your pastors, we are so excited when we hear about the various ministries that other ministries besides these that you're involved in during the week, near or far. And so we thank you for each of those. On the other side of this paper, by the way, on that side of the paper, there's right now there's only three things on this side that we really aren't doing yet. Uh, and maybe you have other ideas for other things that could be done. On the other side then is the this is from the Global Ministries team, formerly known as the Missions Committee, but uh, we've renamed our team to better identify what we do, our purpose. And as you see on this paperwork, there are six parts for that team, Global Missions, Hunger and Health, Justice and Advocacy, Peacemaking, Creation Care, and then something that supports all of the ministries is Prayer and Education. We are doing a lot of these. Many of these we are not doing yet. So if you see them, some things you'd like to be involved in, let us know and we'll be glad to, to do that. The Spirit of God is, is moving us to multiply the ministries. And it's not that we do them ourselves because we only have so much time, but as more people are involved, then more people can do more ministries. To use the gifts and the passions of each person for local and global ministries. We invite you to pick one thing, one global or one, glo one local or one global ministry, or perhaps one of each. How is the Spirit leading you? How will we as a congregational family, how will you and your family, how will the church on earth, amidst all the changes we are going through, live out our spirit-led calling to be witnesses, God's witnesses in ever-widening circles of influence. It will be exciting to see where the spirit blows. Amen.